Death Corps engineers are the vanguard force of the Death Corps, coming up from beneath the ground behind enemy lines to cause havoc on enemy structures and emplacements. But if you want your own, you're going to have to paint them. And that's exactly what we're doing today on this week's episode of The Miniature Men. The first thing you're going to have to do is prime your models. I use Vallejo Surface Primer out of an airbrush. You can also use Citadel's Rattle Can Spray if you want to get it all black, which is good because we want to build up those shadows on these models. Now I've already gone and explained in another video how you can paint Death Corps Blues for your base coat, but just to cover everything again for these infantry, let's go ahead and cover what we're going to do. First, you can see that I'm taking the fang and building up the layers from beneath to the top, adding more layers the higher I get in the model. You can see underneath that there's still plenty of dark blue to simulate shadow underneath the folds. Then I take Thunderhawk Blue and add that to the fang, building it up slowly so that natural light effect starts to take shape on the coat of this model. Make sure you don't coat everything completely flat with this or you're gonna lose all the shading we've been doing. Make sure you get extra opacity on the tops of arms and at the bottom of the coat. Try to leave that shadow underneath the armpit and underneath the folds of the clothing. Try not to aim from underneath. Aim from the side and a little bit from the top to get the coat that you're looking for here. Next up is Rust Gray. It's a pretty pale blue, and what I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit of extra highlighting to the edges of the coat and the edges of the arms, trying to get specific detail on raised portions like the tops of the folds or the cuffs of his sleeves. You also don't want to forget the back of his collar, or the sides of it really. Lastly, you're going to hit it with some Fenrisian Grey. This is very pale. You're going to use very little just to hit the very edge of the bottom of the coat and to just kind of kiss the tops of the arms and the tops of the folds in the clothing. Once you get all the blues airbrushed on, you go ahead and get your Rhinox Brown and you start painting those pants. You can see here that I'm cutting in at the top of the edge so I can keep things clean later on when I fill in the fields of the pants. Now you can see I'm working left to right because I'm right handed and it also helps me keep track of what I've already painted so far. You want to make sure you don't forget to get the bottom part of the pants underneath the knee pad straps. Also, don't forget the pants between the coattails. Rhinox Brown is going to have to go on a couple other components, including the gloves. So make sure you get a nice smooth coat that can cover everything on the hands without clogging up any of those details. It's okay if you get a little bit on those metal plates because we're going to cover those with another color later. Make sure you cut in nice and close to the cuffs of the arms and try to get as close to the gun as you can. Once again, it's okay if you get a little bit over because we're gonna paint that gun and those metal plates later. Then we're gonna paint the hose of the mask. Make sure you get a nice even coat without clogging up those details again. We're gonna get the front mask breather component. Later on, that's gonna be copper, but for now we're undercoating it with the Rhinox Brown. Moving on with our blocking scheme, we're going to get the Morn Fang Brown. It's a nice warm orangish brown. We're going to start with the boots, working from left to right, making sure we get nice even cover without clogging up those details. We want to cut in nice and close to the putties around his ankles. We're also going to use Morn Fang Brown to paint the belt. Be careful when you're painting that belt because it's hard to get an angle where you want to go. You might have to move the handle or your angle of approach so you can get as close to the coat as possible. Be very careful not to paint the belt loops of the coat. Those are supposed to be blue, so don't paint over those. These pouches look like they contain the ammo for their automatic shotguns, so we're gonna get those painted up. Also, you wanna get the knee pad straps. This helps them pop out from the rest of the pants. 
you could just paint it Rhinox brown, but it would just blend in and you wouldn't notice it was there. There's going to be different equipment on each guy, so make sure you get everything that you feel like should be leather with the Mornfang brown. All right, now we're going to start with the German gray. It's a really dark gray with a little blue hit in it. Perfect for these blue-toned deathcore engineers. Now, what it helps you do is paint everything that's supposed to be black that you're going to tint down later on. It's going to look great. And you're going to use this to cover the hands, the guns, the knee pads, and just try to get everything that is supposed to be metal, but it's actually painted. Also, paint everything that's going to end up being painted steel later on. Don't forget to get the edges of the knee pads when you come around there. It really shows up if you don't get those. When we're painting the bigger panels, like the lobster armor here, make sure you're working from the inside out. It really helps your brush work, keep it nice and smooth for later on. You might have to invert your model so you can paint a little bit easier. You can reach into those hard to get areas and pull the paint out towards the outside areas. It really helps keep everything smooth. We're gonna paint the shoulder pads. Don't worry about the little eagle on the right shoulder. You're gonna paint that German gray too because it needs to be painted with silver later on. We're gonna paint the rebreather of the equipment there. The harness at the middle of his back at the top. And we're gonna get the rest of the equipment. This wire spool here or whatever equipment each engineer guy has. There's five different kinds of backpacks and we're gonna paint them all German gray everywhere you see tubing or anywhere you think there's metal equipment. That includes these grenades. When you're painting the helmet, you wanna to try to work from left to right the best you can so you don't repaint any old stuff. You get a nice smooth coat for this big surface at the top of the model. Now remember, it's okay to paint the aquila here because it's going to be silver later on. It's not going to show any of this German gray underneath. It's too dark. Here we are with the last of the browns. It's Bane Blade Brown. This nice pale brown is what I put on the mask and at the putties around the ankle. Now you can see I'm starting to cut in by trying to get to all the edges first and then filling in the field towards the mask. Try to get it as close to the tubing as you can. You can invert if you have to, and then fill in the fields. You wanna make sure you get the creases on the inside of the mask. And then try to cut in as close as you can to the goggles and the helmet. First off with the metals is hatchet copper. I'm using this to get all the buttons on the model and the mask. Now you can see I got the little insert part that the tube goes into as well as the face part of the mask. Just get all that hatchet copper over the Rhinox brown you laid down earlier for the undercoat. All right, now we're on to iron breaker. We're gonna use this to paint all the metal parts of the model. That includes the butt plate of this gun, the tube underneath the gun, the tips of the barrels, the barrel itself. Just be careful to avoid this clamp that goes on in the middle of the barrel. We already painted everything German gray, so anything that you paint too much, you're gonna have to go back and fix later, so be careful here. And of course, you have to get the aquilas. These are gonna require very light brushwork. If you paint too hard, more paint will come off and it will clog up the details on these very, very fine icons on the head and on the shoulder. We're gonna paint the goggle edges that same iron breaker. Now here's a little trick when it comes to painting the front of the goggle edges, is you can use just the side of your brush to glance off some paint onto the top of the goggles there. Do that for both eyes, and then we're gonna move on to the next step. We're gonna paint both goggles entirely black. If there's any overspray, we wanna cover that up, and we're gonna give it a nice soulless black for the death core. It also helps you cover up any mistakes you might've made with the iron breaker in the previous step. Now we're gonna get on to washing the models. We're only using two washes here, Agrax Earthshade and Known Oil. 
I'm not gonna show you a bunch of footage of me washing the models because it's pretty simple on how to do this. Rather, here's an image to help you identify which base coats get which wash. All the browns get Agrax Earthshade. Gray and Ironbreaker get Known Oil. Go ahead and pause this image here to help you keep track of which one goes with which base coat. Once we're done washing everything, we're moving on to the highlight step. The way I like to highlight stuff is I like to do a 50-50 blend with my base coat mixed with the next color up. In this case, we're doing Mornfang Brown mixed with Scrag Brown. We're hitting all the raised surfaces for all the Mornfang components on the model, like the shoes or this padding that he has for the computer braced up against his back and some spots to add some visual interest like the uh, belt here. Just kind of suggesting that light is touching the belt and the tops of the pouches on the belt. Then I like to come back with a pure scrag brown and hit the center of any highlight areas that I hit with the 50-50 blend and the very tips of corners that I highlighted with the same blend. And you can see here that I'm just trying to add some visual interest to any of the corners or very raised edges of this backpack he has here. I wonder what he keeps in the backpack. With Rhinox, it's the same story. Here's a 50-50 blend of Rhinox Brown mixed with Doombold Brown, and we're hitting all the raised edges everywhere on the model. We wanna have some agreement with where light would land. So just make sure you're hitting the tops of the fingers, the tops of the tubes, any raised folds or edges, and then coming back and hitting all the insides of those highlight patches with a pure Doom Bowl Brown. And we're gonna keep going with the same logic that we were doing before with the 50-50 blend, this time with German Gray mixed with Slate Gray from Vallejo Model Colors. And again, we're hitting all the hard edges and corners of all these objects here. You'll notice that there's a lot more of those hard edges because these are all made out of metal. Everything else was wool or leather or fabric. Once you get to the helmet, you're gonna wanna get the very top front corners of the helmet. They're not really corners, but they, there is a suggestion that they're coming to a point there. So you're gonna get a very soft, very thin blend and apply that to the top front there. And again, you're gonna come back and hit the brim of the helmet, the bottom corners and edges of the helmet as well. Once that's all done, you're gonna come back with the slate gray and you're gonna hit all those corners one more time with the pure slate gray to really make it pop. You also wanna get the bolts on everything. And the last of the highlight layers is Bane Blade Brown mixed 50-50 with Karak Stone. Now, unlike the other highlights, this is the only highlight layer I'm gonna to apply to the base of the putty wraps and the mask. And that's because this color is a little more stark against the Agrax Earthshade. So adding more would look very bright compared to the rest of itself and the rest of the model. These guys were digging around in the mud not that long ago. So it really wouldn't make sense to have a very bright color like Karak Stone present. Once you get to the mask, you're gonna want a very narrow brush too. So make sure you have a number zero with a very good point. So you can really pick up those very small ridges located on the mask. One of my favorite parts is adding the battle damage on the engineers. They're already modeled with cuts and scrapes and little chunks of the armor cut away. So you can kind of add to that by using Iron Breaker to show that the paint's been scraping away too. So anywhere you see a scratch or dent, or where you think there might be excessive rubbing, you add some of this and it really pops up against the rest of the armor or even the other silvers that you added because those are all darkened by the washes we used earlier while this looks fresh. Like even the dirt was scraped away when these armor pieces were getting cut up. You can exaggerate the existing notches that you see and you can add your own. Here I am with another weathering effect. We're gonna dry brush some flat earth onto the bottom half of the model. This is the same color I used to dry brush my mud. So it's like kind of the dry part of the mud that is kind of 
across all the models I use. Now, normally you'd be really afraid to have streaking happening when you dry brush your model, but it's more or less okay here because mud tends to streak. One of the fun things that I did just for these engineers is I kind of had this light up panel that I wanted to do something special with. Now the way I do that is I take a layer of black, red, very thin, and try to build that up over a black field. I'm gonna come back with a second coat of the same black, red again, and try to build that up towards the center of whatever it is I'm gonna make. Right now I'm just doing a simple dot in the middle of this. Once the black red is down, I'm gonna to try to get a little bit of normal red from Vallejo Model Color. And again, build that up towards the center of whatever it is I'm painting here. I'm gonna come back with the second coat of that red. It's actually very dark red and just bring it back up to that center. And then lastly, I'm gonna come back with the scarlet and I'm gonna to try to get that a little bit more stark and lay down a little dot to really suggest that this is the source of a light. And as you can see here, I did the same thing for each of their right eyes. I wanted to do something to really emphasize the asymmetry of their masks. And that's everything you need to know about painting deathcore engineers. If you want to see more hobby tips, check out our Instagram where we post almost all the time. Plus, subscribe to this channel so you can see new videos every Friday. That's it for now, guys. We'll see you next time.